Everybody wants to be successful, but every plan must first be born. If you skip birth, you'll never get to development. And you can't despise the days when nobody attends your church. It is those days of lack that will give you the courage to get to the tipping point. I am here to give God some praise. Acceptance, sure we'll find it here. Authenticity in this atmosphere. Anticipation with a lot of action. We take it so far. Welcome to the lighthouse, lighthouse. Let me introduce you to my father. Welcome to the lighthouse, lighthouse. His name is Jesus the Christ. Let me introduce you to my father. Make some noise. Come on, do better than that. Make some noise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and stand to your feet. If you're watching us today, we say welcome to another Lighthouse experience. We want to welcome you to what we call worship. The Bible says those that worship God must worship Him in spirit and in truth. So if you're watching us online, no matter where you're from, if you're from Atlanta, if you're from Ghana, if you're from Australia or London or New York or California, we say welcome and we love you. Come on, everybody in the house. Come on, let's tell all of our online viewers welcome. Let them hear you. Come on, let's raise up a sound. Let them make them feel like they're in the building on tonight. So we thank God for all of you. If you're watching us for the first time tonight, I want you to put in the chat, this is my first time. Put number one. Say, this is my first time. If you're a return visitor, we hope that this worship experience is great and phenomenal as it should be. And if you're in the building and this is your first time worshiping with us, come on and raise your hand. Come on, raise your hand. Come on, let's celebrate. We got some first time visitors. Come on, let's make them feel welcome. Come on, hallelujah. Well, we're excited tonight. On my way into the sanctuary, a young woman, a lady, an older woman was coming to the service and she stopped me. She said, aren't you Pastor Hammond? I said, yes. And she said, Pastor, I came in and I sowed a seed in the box, but I'm on my way to go visit my, my brother because his oxygen levels are, are low. And she said, Pastor, I believe that the seed I'm placing tonight is going to do something exponentially for his life. And I don't know her name. I don't know her. I've never seen her before. But can we corporately just touch and agree with her? And God told me to tell her that before she could even get to Louisiana, she was leaving tonight on her way to Louisiana. God told me to tell her that a turnaround was coming. So come on, let's celebrate her for her faith. And tonight you're going to have a, a position that a seed is sown tonight. You will have an opportunity to put a name and a demand on your seed. If you believe that tonight, come on and lift your hands. If there's something that you believe in God for, come on, you're going to have opportunity tonight to put a demand on it. And so we say again, so we say welcome. And we understand that the factual fervent prayers of a righteous man avail much. And I don't know about you, but I need God to avail some things in my life. I need some things to turn around for my life. I need to be like, as Pastor said, every time I turn around, God keeps doing something amazing for me. Are you looking for a turnaround? A turnaround in your family, a turnaround in your business, a turnaround in your children, a turnaround in everything you put your hand to do. And so today we pray our Father and our God. We come before you with a boldness. God declared and decreed for a turnaround, a turnaround in our mind, a turnaround in everything that we walk on. So God, we declare in this moment as a body of believers that we're asking you, to do what you said you would do. We're asking you, God, not for a seat at the table, but God, we're asking you to help us build tables. Glory to God. Did you catch that? We're not asking for a seat at the table. We're going to build tables, and we're going to allow other people to come before the table. So God, we pray today that miracle signs and wonders shall follow us. We declare and decree tonight, God, that through this teaching we shall be delivered. We declare and decree, God, through this teaching we shall have an immediate overflow into our homes, multiple streams of revenue, business opportunities, be lenders and not borrowers, real estate ventures. We declare and we count it done in the name of Jesus. We declare over this ministry, we declare over this church, 
the Lighthouse Church at every location to have all bills paid off. We declare over this ministry that we'll be 100% tithers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bring it down. Bring it down for a second. We declare in this moment, I need you to hear me clearly, that every person that's connected to the Lighthouse Church will be 100% tither. Come on, raise up a sound. You got it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 100% tithing. We declare through, through the Lighthouse Church, we'll be philanthropists out of this ministry. Hallelujah. Come on, you didn't get that. We declare out of the Lighthouse Church that we shall have many streams of income that's coming from our folks to be a blessing to those in need. That we'll be able to give scholarships. That we'll be able to donate homes. I didn't say the church, you are the church. That you will be able to give cars away. That you will be able to fund and pay student loans off. That you will be able to give and pay hospital bills off. Somebody shout with me and say, I believe God. And account it done in Jesus' name. So we say thank you. We say welcome. And it's sealed. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Can we lift up our voices and shout in this atmosphere? We entered into his gates with thanksgiving. And we entered into his courts with praise. Anybody thankful that you come to bless his name? Why? Because the Lord is good. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. Somebody shout good. Shout good. Shout good. As it turns to the neighbor, to the left, to the right, to the front, to the back, I want you to ask them this question. Say, will you help me bless the Lord? No, no, no. Ask them, say, no, really. You help me bless the Lord. Let's do this. Everybody clap your hands. Everybody clap your hands. Oh, y'all, we going up right now. Yes, sir. Y'all ready? Here we go.
and an honor to be able to worship at his throne this is something that we get to do we get to do this so from that posture can we lift our hands however you connect to him I want you to connect to him right now from your place father we lift our hands to you come on there you go can we just flood this place with words about adoration there you go there you go he loves to hear the sound of your praise he loves to hear your voice it's what he's looking for he's looking for that intimacy he loves your voice he loves your voice he loves the sound that you produce oh god you're amazing you're incredible Just to dwell, dwell, dwell here forever. This will be my posture, laying at your feet. Just to dwell, dwell, dwell here forever. Sit to respond. Come on, sing it.
Stay right there. Lord, I love you more than anything. Everybody say, Lord, Lord, I love you. Last time everybody said, Lord, I love you. Come on, put those hands together and give God praise. Come on, you can do it. Give him glory. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Can you all give this worship team a hand? So um, we're just, we're just going to get right to it. Thank you so much for coming out tonight. Um, I was in the office after church yesterday and um, Tim Godfrey was talking to me about uh, this idea of certain things that the church needs to know. And when he said it, it was like fire uh, and it leaped in my spirit. And so there are a few things that I think that periodically throughout the year we'll do things like this. It's, there's at least three things that I want to teach you that are hard to do on a Sunday with the call and response method. And I'm even gonna take some questions tonight. I'm gonna to take some questions tonight because we used to do this in church and, and we got away from it. And, and, and I think that it's important that we learn together in a setting where there is no expectation that you're gonna shout, right? Where you can just sit down and say, here, I'm throwing all of this on the feet of Jesus. I don't have it right, but I want to get it right. And don't just tell me what's wrong with me. Tell me how to fix it. And that's what we're going to do. And so the Lord gave me these three ideas. There are three weeks and that I want us to work on throughout every year. There, that the first one is the wealth week. I want to show you what to do with your money. The other one he gave me was the worship week because we worship, but I, wanna, I want you to know why you do what you do and what worshiping God actually does for you. And then another week I want to have later on in the year is called the work week so that we don't become so focused on what God can do for us that we forget what he created us to do for him and that is to serve him in the spirit of holiness. Can I get an amen? amen. So we need to have wealth. We need to worship and we need to work. This is going to be wealth week. Everything you do for the rest of this week, I want it focused on wealth. 
I don't want you eating food you can't afford. I don't want you shopping if you can't afford to. I don't want you, listen, I'm so serious that if it's somebody's birthday this week, don't let them mess up your wealth week. They can wait till next year to get a present. Happy birthday, Lonnie. Um, but I want, I, want, I want you all to know that this is serious because when you have a goal, you have to understand the enemy comes to sift you as weak. And, and, and that whenever you are going in a direction, the enemy's job is to make sure you don't get there. And everything this week that we declare Wealth Week, trust me on this, everything is going to come after your money. And the bad part about it is when it's coming after money that you ain't got. Right? How many of you all, by show of hands, will be honest and say, Rev, I live from check to check. I live from check to check. If I can't get sick, because if I don't go to work and get paid, I can't take a vacation. I can't. I want to. I want to shift that. And 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 as we talk, I want you to know. For those of y'all who have the spirit of honesty, you're sitting next to somebody who may not. So don't think you in it by yourself. A lot of people love faking, and they'll they'll get through this whole service acting like everything is okay. Uh, but I want the real people to come in here and say, you know what, if I miss a week worth of work, I can't pay my rent. I'm, I can't pay my car note, Rev. I'm, I mean, the car is nice, but I got to go to work to pay for it. We're going to break the stronghold over your finances tonight. Can you say amen? To so those of you all who are watching online, you are, you are definitely in this service with us. I wish you could see how many people responded to a service that wasn't planned 20 hours ago. Just look around. All right. So um, I'm sitting down now, but I don't, I'm already ready to get up. I brought this chair out here to, to discipline myself. Uh, but if he used me, I'm going to get up. And then we're just going to have to do what we got to do. Amen. Uh, but I want to start off talking about what that is. Oh, and by the way, this ain't going to be all Bible today. I'm doing some financial advising today, so if you're looking for me to give you a scripture for everything that I'm going to give you, some of the stuff ain't in the Bible, okay? But it needs to be in your pocket. Can you say amen? Okay, so we're going to be half church and half fidelity today. We're going to do both and, and see if we can get there. So, so by definition, by definition, um, debt uh, is something that's owed or due. We all agree with that. Is that correct? So some debts that you have are unavoidable. You cannot not have an electric bill. You cannot not have a water bill. But you can get the toilet fixed if it's running. So we're going to talk about this stuff. You know, if you see water in your curb uh, on, on your street, then that, it probably means that your sprinklers are leaking. But, but when you're not a good steward, you just walk past it, where when you are a good steward over your money, uh, you get it fixed. And, and I was watching a movie uh, with my wife uh, Sunday night called Tower Heist. Anybody ever saw it? All right, you got to watch it. It's, it's Eddie Murphy. It's hilarious. Uh, but there is a guy in it who's a billionaire, and he's going to jail for securities fraud. Let me show you how rich people think. And let me, get the chair away from me. Get away from me. <laughs> oh, Lord. He's a, he's a rich guy. He's a billionaire. He's so rich that the floor of his swimming pool is a dollar bill. He's got a $45 million car in his living room. Made completely of gold. Okay? When I say completely of gold, I'm not just talking about the car. The carburetor's gold. Okay? The muffler is gold. You understand what I'm saying? It's $45 million. This man is so rich that he tells the person who's getting ready to put him in jail and Ben Stiller, who's also in the movie, he says, you think that this car is worth anything? He said, if you don't turn me in, I'll give you 10 times what the car is worth. <laughs> I, I, wish I, I wish I knew somebody business that good. Where they offer me $450 million. Now, tell, let me tell you something. If you give me $450 million, I won't even say it on my deathbed. <laughs> I'll be dying. And they be talking about, you need to tell the truth. I'm like, the Lord handles the truth. I got to die. Y'all bye. <laughs> he says on his way to jail, talking about a billionaire. Are you listening to me? I'm talking about a steward. He says, cover the swimming pool and turn off the heat because I hate to waste money. 
turn off the heat to the swimming pool while I go to jail overnight because I hate to waste money. Listen, people of God, when you get money, you cannot act like you have it. The only way to keep money is to keep living in some areas like you don't have it. Don't want to be financially free so you can be undisciplined. I still walk through my house talking about turn the lights off. Not, 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 I, I guess poverty is a mindset and it's somehow, sometimes it's difficult to get away from. So sometimes I still feel broke. I still go to the gas station and be like, Jesus, what are they doing to us? Like my mind still works that way. When I go to a restaurant, I still look at the bill and calculate the tip. I still use my calculator, all of that kind of stuff. Why? Because when you are a steward, you have to understand it doesn't belong to you. So debt is something that is old. That's it. But the conditions of debt and the people who are in debt, and I want to see who will be honest. Raise your hand if you have any debt in the room today. Okay, so that's all of us. All right, I'm going to preach this sermon <laughs> to you. That's why we're here, right? And look at your name and say, don't judge me. Your business ain't my business. My business ain't your business. None of your business is mine. Get out of my business. But how many of y'all have been in church where the preacher, the teacher, the evangelist always approach debt from a moral standpoint as if to say because you're in debt, something wrong with you? That because you're in debt, you are this irresponsible, uncouth, non-generative uh, person that just, just living wild. How many of you, you ever felt that way when it comes to the conversation about debt? I want to let you know that I will not cover it from that position today because I even have biblical evidence of where people were in debt for conditions that were not even their fault. First one, 2 Kings chapter 4. Remember there was a widow woman? The creditors came to the house to collect. Why was she in debt? Because her husband died. And in those days, women were not allowed to work, so she had no source of income. So once her husband died, the income dried up, and now the creditors come to get the bills like they did every month, like they do at your house. And the difference is, is in those days, the creditors didn't have a mail system or they didn't have the internet, so the creditor had to actually come to the house and get the bill. Now they just mail them to us, or you get an email, but they still come to your house, right? And, and, and how many people in here are professional at hiding from creditors? If a phone number come on your phone that you don't know, the phone's sitting there on the table, you having a conversation with somebody, your phone ringing, they looking at you like you're going to answer, you be like, I, I don't know that number, keep talking. <laughs> and if, how many, if it say spam, you're done. You send them right to voicemail, they don't want nothing. Okay, so they're, they're still invading our space, but... But all debt isn't because of irresponsibility. Sometimes it's hard because you were a godparent and you didn't expect uh, that, that somebody would hand the child over to you or be deceased and all of a sudden you got an extra person in the house. Some, some of you all are in debt because you went to work faithfully every day, but they cut your hours and, or, or they cut the pay or, or they shipped the job overseas. There are a million ways and a million reasons that you can be in debt. Uh, in 2008, people woke up, their house was worth 500000 woke up in the morning, it was worth 200000 All of a sudden, they're upside down in the house they had equity in. All debt is not because of immorality. Interest rates go up. You didn't, sometimes, sometimes debt is a result of not being disciplined enough to read the fine print. To know that that interest only loan was only interest only for 24 months, but after 24 months, all of the interest would be compounded because you didn't read the fine print, or you didn't know what they meant by a balloon. So you went in and thought you had a loan at 3%, not knowing that it was five years fixed with the balloon, and so you woke up and it was 17% because they knew you would not have the debt paid off in five years. They knew it would balloon. Sometimes you are a victim to having no knowledge, and people perish. Okay, so I want you to understand that I, I know 
that, that you didn't get in debt because you got 12 Chanel bags. You in debt because your kid is greedy. And they like to eat. And they, they wore a 12 yesterday and a 14 this morning. They were 10, 12 last month, and now they're in a, a, a medium. You, what, what is going on? Nobody knew that your child was going to grow 12 inches in 14 days. So there are a whole lot of things. You didn't know that the school was going to require a computer. There are a whole lot of things that can contribute to that. And so I want to talk about it. But I do want to also talk to those of you, and we're going to get to the principles, those of you who borrow, and this is where, this is where it gets tricky, when people borrow money and then get upset with the people who want it back. Now we got to talk. <laughs> what you calling me for? Because you owe them. You can't borrow money and then get upset because they keep calling you. That's their job. How many people in here hang up on credit uh, creditors and hang up on people collection? They just hang up on them and act like they the devil. No. They're doing the same thing you would do if they owed you. Now let me talk. Because if your boss sent your paycheck and it was 500 last week, and this week it was $40 short. Mm -hmm. Ain't nobody here gonna be like, oh, you know they make mistakes. <laughs> if your check is short, you going to human resources tomorrow with a bomb strapped to your chest, talking about if I don't get my $40, I'm taking everybody out. Exodus chapter 22, verse 14. Who can already tell them to help them? <laughs> Exodus 22 and 14 says, if anything is borrowed, it should be paid back. Bottom line. I cannot stand people who take forever to pay people. But when somebody owe them, they want their money now. You, you, you cannot be that hypocritical. Anything that is borrowed must be paid back. If it was borrowed or is lost or injured, full restoration must be made. That is the scriptur. That's how my father used to say. It's the scriptur. Not because of an over impulsive spending habit, uh, all of those things that contribute to our debt, ducking your creditors, and avoiding those you owe is the reason why you can't get out of debt. Because money is God's MRI for the heart. Money, since our heart, you can't see my heart right now. So what God did is he put money in the earth. Money is an imaging machine that shows the condition of a person's insides. That's why they tell you money doesn't make you anything. It only reveals what you already are because wherever your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So God put money in the earth so that our heart can be seen from a distance. And so when you owe a person and you are okay with, with owing them and you don't care whether or not you're going to pay them back, it is the reason why God will not put you in a position to bounce back because your heart is so disintegrated that he knows he can't trust you with more money. Oh, God, help me. See, y'all came thinking I was just going to, I'm going to get there. I'm going to get there. I'm going to show you how to get out, but I got to show you how you got in first. If you are so cold-hearted that you know you owe somebody and you don't care, and, and you owe somebody but you still shopping and buying new stuff, You'd rather go buy a new bag than give me my money and then get mad at me because I said something. Ain't nobody got your money. I'm going to pay you when. Let me give you a piece of advice. Never let anybody borrow money you cannot afford to lose. Because when you let people borrow money, it get in their pocket and they get brand new. They start acting fake and phony and don't remember where they got it from, and then, then they want to confront you. A uh, so-and-so told me that you said I owe you some money. I did. Where that? So debt 
is not the problem only. It is our perception towards that debt. And when you have a mindset that, you know what, I know I owe you and I'm going to do everything that I can to get it back to you, then God blesses that heart to be able to fulfill the debt. But the person who says, I don't care what I owe you, I ain't giving it to you, whether that's AT&T or your ain't them, whoever it is, then God is saying, okay, well, I can't trust that heart, so I'm going to let you keep the debt and I'm going to keep the money. Help me, Holy Ghost. Ducking your creditors, ducking people you owe is a sin. It's selfish and it's greedy. God uses money as a way of revealing the heart since it cannot be seen. Matthew 6, 21, for where your treasure is, that's where your heart is also. I wish every one of y'all would just give me a copy of your last months of transactions and I can tell you where your heart is. Some of y'all heart is at Mastro's. How many Amazon hearts in the church? <laughs> Jeff Bezos got your heart. Amazon at your house every single day, delivering some. Your neighbors is like, what are they doing over there? Are they drug trafficking? They got a box coming every single morning. When you and the Amazon man exchange Christmas cards, <laughs> what up, Jared? How you doing, man? I'll see you tomorrow. When, when y'all know each other that well, Man, Amazon so gangster. They 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 coming up with all new kind of stuff. They got drones that's gonna be dropping the packages off in the yard. Now they got a thing where they got a, a, a code to your garage. We so greedy, we won't even give our cousins the key to the house, but Amazon can come right on in. You got folks you related to talking, don't get them the code. You let Amazon walk right in. Do you know that Walmart is starting a service where they actually will come into your house and stock your refrigerator? with the items that you picked. And people are doing it. And why y'all complaining and telling me, eh, in about five years, all y'all gonna be doing it. Same thing you said about Uber. Five years ago, you said, I don't sleep in nobody's bed. Now you all up in Airbnbs and everything. You bring your own sheets, but you're going. How many of y'all be lice, just lice all in the bed? Just Ain't nothing like staying in your own house, ain't it? This is, uh. Psalms 37, 21. I'm just going to use the Bible and then we get to the principles. The wicked borrows but does not pay back. But the righteous is generous in gifts. God's saying if you borrow money and you don't give it back, you're wicked. I'm not going to give a wicked person the winning lottery ticket. <laughs> By the way. Let me put this on tape because I don't want nobody to judge me. But let me tell you, I know they say that gambling is a sin. I'm still looking for the scripture. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it might be in there, but I might be overlooking it. But I do know this. For $1.2 billion, this is what I will do. Not million, but billion. Father, I stretch. <laughs> Go right on outside. <laughs> 1.2 billion? For the kingdom's sake. <laughs> and let me tell you, they got ripped off because they got, they got one lump sum. The government got 827 million. They got 433. I think I'd have just got my payments over time. That's just too much money. I'll be, I'll be right up here. Pastor Torrance had to preach that Sunday. I'm going to repent, Reverend, and say, Reverend, you preach this Sunday. I'm not fit for the gospel today. I'll be back next week. But I ain't fit today. I won. The Lord told me I had the victory. Whoo, Jesus. He said, I'm going with you, Reverend. Raymond, you're going to have to preach because he's going to be with me. you going with me. Hammond, you're going you gonna to go with me. Mama Hammond, would you preach while we go? I know you're holy. I know you'll do it. No, you're going to be with us. Lord, will anybody preach? <laughs> You're going to be driving me. How should they preach? How should they hear without a preacher? How should they preach lest they be sent? Oh, 
We carnal at this church. (laughs) Borrowing by definition is the loss of freedom. The borrower is what? Slave to the lender. So the more people you borrow from, the more slave masters you have. Now you might not like to hear that. I went, I went into AT&T to, to get a new phone for my daughter for her birthday. Do you know they won't even let you buy the phone? I went in there to buy the phone. He said, sir, I can't sell you the phone. I said, why you can't sell me the phone? He said, we can't sell you the phone. You got to go to Apple to buy it all right. Here, we got to put you on a payment plan. I said, oh, so y'all want us to be in debt. I said, I got something for you. I got something for you. He said, sir, ain't nothing you can do. I said, it ain't nothing you can do, but it's something I can do. So what I did is I said, give me the phone. They put it on the account. As soon as, soon as it came on the bill, I paid it off. He said, you ain't, you ain't going to get me. Because what they're doing is they're taking the money that you're paying over and above the principal, and they're investing it. So they're not just making money off the service. They're investing the money you put in. And let me tell you, that's all the bank is. All the bank is is somebody who says to all of us, give us your money. The bank takes your money, puts it in the stock market, makes $5 on what you invested, gave you 2.0% for the savings account. They made $4.99 on money they never made. We could have a church bank. We could have a church credit union. But the problem is, is when we do it, and you refuse to pay us back like you do them. There is enough money in this room. If we all put our money together, we could be loaning each other money at 2% interest rate instead of 65 plus prime with what they're doing in the world. But, but we won't do it. But all the bank is is a group of people who collectively put their money together and loaned it to people who don't have it. The Assemblies of God have this thing figured out. They loan money to their own churches to get. This church was built by an Assemblies of God church. The pastor of this church had a loan through the church that he was a part of before we came in. So what we did when we got the church is we said, okay, well, we're not going to come in and just be in debt like that because you want us to be. So what we did is we went down the street. We bought 10 acres of land in the area that we knew that the interest rate uh, would be low and, and knew that the property would appreciate. We bought the property, held on to the property for three months, held on to it for six months, held on to it for a year, and by the time we got to almost the third year, we doubled our investment, took that money, put it down on the principle of this, and kept the interest rate and the mortgage low. And by the way, the more money you put down on a loan, you can actually go in and ask them to buy down the interest rate. When you have a down payment, they can say it's 5%. You can say, nope, I'm giving you 25% down. I demand a 3% interest rate or I'm going to another bank. You don't have to accept the interest rate that they have unless you go in and talk about, ooh, I'm a first-time buyer. Can I get something with no down payment? Let me tell you something. (laughs) You talking about, ooh, I'm blessed. I ain't have to put none down. No, you cursed. Because now the interest is on 100% of the asset as opposed to 80 or 70%. A 0% interest rate, excuse me, a a 0% down payment is not a, a great idea for real estate, especially if you're in a depreciating asset like a house. Thank you, I'm trying. No, this is, this is stuff you probably won't hear on Sunday morning in most churches, but you need this stuff. Borrowing is the loss of freedom. Has God ever called you to do something? Have you ever had a great idea? Has somebody ever told you about a great investment opportunity and you had to pass it up because you didn't have the money? Somebody tell you, man, I got a great idea, but because you didn't have the money, you had to hear the idea and couldn't respond to it. Because borrowing is a loss of of freedom. It is the loss of freedom. I have met many people who were in the proximity of blessings but couldn't approach it because they were in debt. And in debt for some of the silliest stuff like 
Uh, I understand you need transportation, but you do not need an 85,000 square foot uh, house. You, you don't need a million inch TV in your bedroom. You in there just. <laughs> Time I got surround sound. Yeah, but you broke. You got a full, listen, you got a full K TV and don't have 4,000 in the bank. Now the TV's an AK. Haven't you figured out that once you buy the AK, it's going to be 16K? After you buy the 16K, it's going to be a 32K. One day, somebody going to come out of the TV and say, what's up? And go back in. And you're going to be like, man, did you see on TikTok that what's up TV? I got to have that what's up TV. I mean, one day, Steph Curry going to be dribbling in San Francisco and be right in your living room and cross back over and go right back in the TV. You're going to be like, I got to have that. I got to have that, dog. For what? <laughs> we are in debt over things that give us temporary highs Amen. and permanent lows. Because when you get depressed, you don't even turn the TV on. <laughs> I got to have that Sealy Posturepedic mattress. <laughs> and now you got that Sealy Posturepedic mattress and can't sleep. <laughs> and you got to get all your sheets from Pottery Barn. You better go to Target and Walmart and get you some 800 counts thread, put it on there. Wash it in cold. Don't wash it in hot because it's going to get nappy. It ain't nothing worse than being them sheets and them balls is everywhere. You just... Nine and 25 says, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? That means that when you go buy the car, you might need a V6 and not a V8 just for this season. You might can't get the, you know, the special order package with the paint and all that. Just get what they got out there. Just for this season. Did you not know that cars are less money when you buy them on the last day of the month or the last month of the year because they got to get the inventory off of the lot so the car is cheaper? Did you not know that instead of going in there trying to get you a brand new car, ask them about the demo? Because the demo has to have 5,000 miles or less on it. But guess what? They got to depreciate the car by 20 to 40 percent. And you can have technically a brand new car for used car price. Ask them when you go into the car lot, what car did the boss used to drive? Because he's going to drive it every 5,000 miles and turn it back in. Go in there and buy the car that he drove for three months. Does this make sense? I would rather you buy a brand new Toyota than a used BMW. Because you're trying to floss. So you're buying a 10-year-old car to look rich instead of going in there and getting you a brand new Corolla and let the thing roll for 100,000 miles instead of you being in the shop every other 15 days. Don't worry about what you look like when you go up to Valet. Don't worry about what people think about you when you drive up there. There's so many millionaires driving Priuses around here. Don't worry about what these people think about you. Everybody, everybody, everybody flossing, getting all dressed up, getting your best purse, getting your best belt, got all your rings and your chains on just to go to the Valet and for everybody to be like, who is that? And once you go in, it's over. You can't cash who is that. Where are you going to spend who is that at? 
Because after they say, who is that, they still ain't going to know who you is. Now you're going to be the most flashiest person in the restaurant, looking at everybody at the table to see what they ordered and drinking, adding up the, the check before the bill is over, and now you're nervous. Yeah, I'm talking to somebody here. It might not be all of y'all, but I'm talking to somebody. If you find yourself in debt, I wanted you to know that God cares about your situation. God loves you as you are. Having, debt, having debt will not reduce his love towards you. And being debt free won't increase it. You have to want to do this for you. Because if you don't solve this riddle, you will teach it to your children unknowingly. You've heard me say this a million times. My mother worked at Taco Bell. And when we were growing up, the only thing my mother could teach me about money when we were growing up is how to live without it. She taught us how to make it. She told, you don't need all of those. When we went school shopping, we got three outfits. We got three outfits. At one point in time, my sister Kiana and I wore the same size, so we got six total. So for the first week of school, I wore the first three, she wore hers, then we switched. And then I wore hers, and she wore mine. Then obviously I got too tall, and that was over. <laughs> but she taught us how to live without it. You know what we did when we were younger? She ran bath water in the tub and we all had to take a bath in the same water. Some of y'all think y'all kids too good for that. I just want to give my children a life that I never had. But they spoil rotten and they ain't better at this point than you were. So I'm trying to figure out how your life was so bad that you needed to improve it, but they're not a better version of you yet. Sometimes a child needs to understand struggle even if you are not struggling. You need to teach them the art of saving, the art of what to do with the dollar, the art of tithing, the art of putting up. Even if you balling like that, don't teach them that everything happens at their whims. They need to be healthy enough to understand simple little words like, no. Because you had to live through some no's, didn't you? And no made you who you are. Giving your children everything they want, and you don't even have everything you need, is setting them up for a reality that they cannot propensiate. And let me tell you something. I am, I am a firm believer in this. I am a firm believer in this. You go and you tell your children, listen, there are some things that I'm going to give you, yes, but there are some things you're going to have to earn. I'm going to have to look at their report card. When I grew up, I don't know if they do this anymore, but we had grades and citizenship grades. So our behavior was a part. Y'all don't have that no more? We got A through Fs, and then we had E's, S's, and U's. The E's was excellent, the S was satisfactory, and the U was just terrible. And, and, and they misprinted U's on my report card all the time. I don't know what was wrong with their clerical skills. They would just somehow put a U on my paper, and I don't know how I got there. I told my mom, I said, they make a lot of mistakes at that school. <laughs> Lying on me, because I do not act up every day. So when we, when, we, when we look at this, what we're actually having to do with ourselves is understand that God expects the same thing from his children that we expect from ours. You want your kids to clean up their room and you don't? I'm grown, but are you a steward? Y'all ain't gonna talk, huh? Like, you, you can't ask God, Lord, bless me with a new car, and, and it's a whole pack of french fries under it right now. 
under the seat. If I go in some of y'all car right now, you got seven outfits. No, don't get no attitude now. I'm almost done. Look at me. Look at me. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Don't get no attitude now. Twelve pair of shoes in the trunk. You, you can't even go grocery shopping because you ain't got nowhere to put the groceries. Y'all seen that? Y'all seen that TikTok when the man wanted to get in the car with the woman, but she had to get all the stuff out of the front seat for him to sit down? Everybody say stewardship. stewardship. Right, it's, it's rough in here. Let me hurry up and get through this. <laughs> if you find yourself in debt and you found yourself here today, I'm about to give you some practical tools on how to get out, but I wanted you to know that your heart has a lot to do with what God is going to release. He actually says if you borrow and you don't care about paying it back, he says you're wicked. Nobody wants to be considered wicked. So you have to make up in your, mind, your mind and heart right now, okay, God, if you change the situation for me, I'm going to get out of debt, and I'm about to tell you some ways you can do that. Are you all ready? The first thing you have to be is disciplined. Now, let me tell you what discipline means. Um, the, the Latin for discipline uh, is the idea of this word scourge, S-C-O-U-R-G-E, scourge. Historically, a scourge is actually a whip that a slave master would use to discipline a slave. So when I say discipline yourself, it means you actually have to whip you when you find yourself doing something that is not positive for you. And because self-preservation is the first law of nature, the hardest person we find in our life to discipline is ourselves. We'll discipline our children and won't hold ourselves accountable. You want your husband to be disciplined. You want your wife to be disciplined. But when they tell you about being disciplined, now you're talking about, why well, I just can't be me. Oh. Ain't nobody ever been in that situation with somebody telling you, you need to change, you need to change, you need to change. And then you say, well, you need to change. Well, this ain't about me, it's about you. So you have to be disciplined. Money requires discipline. And the people who have the most of it are disciplined. I can give you examples, and it's all public knowledge. And I'll use Mike Tyson for uh, an example because he says it all the time. Mike Tyson made $300 million boxing before they were paying like Floyd is making money. $300 million when inflation wasn't what it is, the rates were all low. So, so just multiply that would, would be five or six hundred million in these days. Money, 300 million spent it all till he had none. Why? Because money is not just the answer. Discipline is because if you don't have the discipline, you'll do like most people who are either in athletics or win the lottery. They will spend themselves back to their original position. Why? Because water always finds its level. And when you don't discipline yourself, you will subconsciously find the level of your intelligence. You, you won't even know it. When, when you don't change your mind, you will subconsciously, through all of your decisions, find yourself in the same position. Because if a man is going to be changed, he must not be renewed in his bank account. He must be renewed in his mind. And if you don't change your mind, your old mind will take you back. Even if you're in a new situation, I know what I'm talking about. If you don't change your mind, and if you don't discipline yourself, you can get a blessing and it is actually a curse. Because a car to an undisciplined person is dangerous. To a disciplined person, it's transportation. Fentanyl in a doctor's hand eases pain. Fentanyl in the hands of a teenager is death the size of a grain of salt. See the difference? Because when you know how to handle something, you can use it properly. When you don't know how to handle it, it uses you.
you cannot serve God and mammon. That means money. So you have to be disciplined. And after you're disciplined, you have to make a declaration. Proverbs 18, 21 says that death and life is where? In the power of the tongue. Most of the deficit that we are in is in our doubt. Like even right now, as I'm talking about being debt free and, and getting ready to give you these principles, there are so many people listening online and in this room, they don't believe they can do it. So even when I give it to them, it won't work because they won't believe it. They won't believe it. They won't believe it. It's just, it is something about some people. They are so negative that positivity won't even visit. They're just every, everything is negative. Every outlook is negative. Have you ever talked to a negative person? You can say, oh, this sanctuary is nice. It is nice, but it's just a little dark on the right side corner up in the loft. But other than that, it's all right. Ugh. It's a nice day outside. It's beautiful. Yeah, but yesterday? Did you say yesterday? Well, it's today. Church was good. Church was amazing. Yeah, it was good, but, you know, that one person might have been doing too much jumping. I don't understand that people should do all that, but, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Just complaining? And right now, the negative conversation you're having with yourself is going to keep you from getting this oil. I ain't never going to get out of that. That's just too hard for me. He don't know my situation. He don't know what I got up against me. It don't matter. Is there, too, is there anything too hard for God? I'm not going to give you the money for it. The Lord is, so you might as well chill. <laughs> let God write the check. I remember one preacher told me, he said, Pastor, let me ask you a question. You think God is able? I said, yes. He said, do you think it's, it's tough to trust him sometimes? I said, yes, yeah, sometimes. He said, well, let me ask you a question. What size must the check be to bounce if God writes it? What size must the check be to bounce if God writes? If God writes the check, it's all good. I remember there was one year in this church that I got up in that stage and I said, you know what, this is the year that God's going to cancel student loan debt. And we have 42 confirmed people who brought letters in the mail with a zero balance on something they had been on over a decade. Do we have any of those people in the room right now? Raise your hand. Look at that. Look, look around so you don't think I'm just talking. Look up here, up front, to my left. Literally said it, declared that God told me to tell you right now. And people start bringing it to me saying, Rev, I've, I've been on this money since I was 22. And all of a sudden, boom. Because God can decree a thing. He can decree a thing. God can just say it and it'll get in the wind. And you got to be saying what God is saying. You got to be saying, I am the head and not the tail. I'm above only and not beneath. I am the lender and not the bar. You got to make a declaration. It starts in your mouth. It starts in your head before you ever see it in your hand. If you don't say it, you won't see it. Somebody say it, say it before you see it. I say it again, say it before you see it. You got to walk in every store in the mall as I can afford everything up in here, but I'm going to leave out of here with nothing. You got to just say it. You got to say it. I cannot wait until I write a $10 million tithe check. You got to say it. And it got to be big. I'm not talking about no $10,000 tithe check. I've already done that. I'm not talking about giving $100,000. I've done that. I want to come and say, God, here's $100 million. Because if I can give $100 million, you know what I'm sitting on? So one of the ways to get your surplus up is to start with your gift. Growing your 10% is how you handle the 100%, not keeping the 90. I'm a firm believer in giving at all times to those who are in need and those who are not. And, 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 and the struggle with some of us is the only people we give to are those who are in need. But let me tell you something. If you reap what you sow and sometimes from where you sow, you can't make sure, you got to make sure that all of your seed ain't in people in need. You need to make sure that you sow up into some people who got something to say, God, give me a double portion of what? Oh, you ain't going to hear me. You, you, you can't just stop and always give it to the panhandle on the street. Sometimes you got to find somebody who kill it and say, you know what? I want to invest in your life and ask God that whatever's on you finds its way on me. Do I have a witness in the church tonight? 
My life changed when I sold into a millionaire, not a person who was praying to get their phone bill paid. When you sow into the ground, that's what yields. And when you sow into somebody who has that pessimistic personality that we just talked about, how is something good going to come out of that? They feel good and you feel good, but heaven ain't bothered. And you in that time, oh, I gave the girl today, I gave today, I get, okay, now you feel good, nothing's happening. But when you bring ye the tithe, heaven gets stirred up and say, oh, I can trust them. I can trust them. Test me on this. See, when I open up the windows of heaven and pour you out, I just want to tell you in decree this right now. If you hear what I'm saying right now, God told me to tell you, get ready for fallen blessings. You're going to walk into favor. You're going to walk into things that are going to have your name on it. You're not going to have to steal it. You won't have to manipulate for it. You won't have to. They that wait on the Lord. Somebody shout, I'm waiting on it. How many of you all believe that God has it? It got your name on it. It's your season. It's your time. Somebody say millions assigned to my hand. I'm not talking about no $200. I'm not talking about no $500. Matter of fact, and I'm not trying to be bougie or nothing, I ain't even talking about no $10,000. I'm talking about... Millions, billions. Do you know how much money is in the world? It's money everywhere. I mean, everywhere. Waiting on somebody to claim it. Everywhere. The government has to. They have to send out a letter every year to say we had this many billions in grants, but we didn't give it away because nobody qualified for it. <laughs> and see, we, we perish because of lack of knowledge, because there are all kind of minority grants <clears throat> that are out there for us to start businesses. <clears throat> but we won't search. We won't read. We, we, it's, it's just out there. It's free knowledge, but we won't do it because you got to have energy to get out of debt. You can't, you can't talk about, I just got off of work. When you got a plan, you, you get off of the job so you can start working. You got to understand the difference. The job is what you do for them. The work is what you do for yourself. So you got to get off the job so you can start work. And you got to work the work of the one that sent you while it is day for the night is coming when no man can work. I got to stop. Everybody say be disciplined. Be disciplined. Everybody say make a declaration. If you already object to the advice that I'm giving you, then you're going to stay indebted to the debt. Okay? So here's the next thing you got to do. You ready? Say no to new debt. I got a credit card off in the mail, and they said I was going to get 60,000 miles for two trips anywhere in the world. You can't even pay for nothing when you get there. Just stay home. <laughs> You're going to go all the way over there and have to pack sandwiches because you can't afford to pay all that money. for. Just stay, stay at the crib for a year. <laughs> Say no to interest-bearing credit cards. All of them. Airlass. One of them. You heard? All of them. Air last. One of them. Even the one that they sent in the mail. Even the one when they come on the airplane, welcome to such and such airlines where we just love to travel and we love our people. And let me tell you right now, just for a small offer today, we're not offering it to anybody else but you. We're going to give you a credit card right now for, for, for 60,000 miles, and we're going to give you two free tickets to anywhere in the world here in the United States. <laughs> anywhere in the world in the United States of America, and we're going to give you these two tickets, and I'm going to tell you right now, this credit card is good at the gas station. It's good, 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 good. It ain't good for nothing but getting them rich. Because they know that when you finally do use the ticket, 
You're going to want to go somewhere more than the ticket cost because anytime somebody gives you an infusion of cash, you always add more to it, just like a gift card. Because they ain't telling you there's a cap on it. So if the ticket is 600, you're going to say, I got 600. Now I can go to Hawaii. So let me get a ticket for 1200. So what they're doing by giving you an offer is forcing you to spend money that you would have never spent. And they'll give you a little bit of their cash to get more of yours. And then when you get there, you got to rent a car. And that car going to need gas because you can't take it back empty. And if you, and if you use their plan, the gas plan, at the, at the, they're going to tell you right now, you can pre-fill the tank. You ain't going to use but a quarter tank, but you just gave them $90 because you lazy. I always tell them, she laughs at me all the time. They be like, you want to pre-fill up? Nope. I don't know how this arrangement going to go. I might save $5 at the gas station. So I'm going to leave five minutes early so I can get to the gas station and put my own gas in it because I'm not giving you $9 a gallon when they're charging $8.50. <laughs> not doing it. Oh, y'all know, know how often my family laugh at me. I ain't worried about none of them. They laugh at me. They talk about me. I don't care. My sister Kiana called me cheap all the time. I don't care what she got to say about me. Never did, ain't gonna start. She'd be like, you so cheap. Okay. Call me what you want to. But I'm not, she just said again, I'm not giving it to them. They didn't work for it, it's mine. I'm not giving it to the banks. I'm not giving it to the, I'm not giving it to those people. They got their own money. They ain't giving me theirs. Anytime I take theirs, it's called stealing. So I think they stealing from me. I am frugal. <laughs> I prefer she change the terminology when she's describing me. When I want to be, and then if I don't feel like it, you know, I'm the kind of person I won't spend nothing for a long time, but when I see something I want, I'm going to clean them up, Jack. I'm going to get all of it. <laughs> if, if they make a pair of shoes that I want, I'm getting all the colors. But then I won't get nothing for a long time. That's how I am. A long time? I don't know. <laughs> Whenever it feel long. <laughs> but I know one thing I don't do, I don't use my savings account to buy nothing. I know one thing I don't do, when, when, when my account get to the, the level that I done told it it can't go beneath, me and my account start having a conversation. Now, now look, now I done told you, you can't go beneath that. We got to make some adjustments. Are you listening to me? Say no to new debt. Do not turn that lease in because you're tired of driving it. You ready for a new car? They came out to 2022, so you want to hurry up and get it. That 22 is going to be there when it's going to be there, and that 20 is working fine. Don't go get a new car just because they changed the body style. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm talking to some of y'all right now. Don't go get a new car because you went up there to get the oil changed and they told you, you know what? After we change the oil and change the tires, you might as well get a new one because this one they're going to change, them, change that oil, get you some new tires, keep driving. Are you listening to me? No to new debt. All right, let me give you another practical one. I want you to try something called the snowball effect. Here's what the snowball effect is. Oh, I like this excitement because I'm, people are tired of being broke. I want you to list out all of your debts because you can't pay what you're trying to ignore. All them subscriptions that you're paying and you're not using. You ain't been to the gym this century. Cancel it. It ain't but $10 a month. Yep. But $10 times 12 is 120 and after four or five years, that's enough to put in a savings account or a money market to do something with. You could fund an IRA, which we're going to talk about, with all of the subscriptions you're not using. You do not need a cable box on all of your TVs. Talking about I need DVR in air room, you know, I need a cable box. You better get you some fire sticks and some... 
Uh, you better get some internet and watch YouTube because everything on there anyway, and you ain't doing them, but wh why would you pay $500 a month for cable to watch stuff you've seen before? You've just seen every episode of Martin, but you just got to have it. You'd be better off going to buy the DVDs and get a DVD player. At one point, my cable bill was $1,000. You can say, woo, but I ain't got it no more. I got Hulu. <laughs> Holla. I got all the channels with no ads for $60. I'm gonna tell you, now, I'm going to tell you why my sister called me cheap. Y'all ready? Because she called me cheap because I won't get Netflix. She already paying for it. Why would I? <laughs> Until they do something about that password share, Netflix is on her. And I sign in under her name. She messing up my shows. Talking about previously seen. I ain't seen that before. That's her. Uh-huh. Now, Netflix finna change that just so y'all know. But until then, my name is Kiana. <laughs> they had this new show. Uh, what's that show? Uh, Fresh Prince. Uh, what is it? Bel Air on Peacock. Well, she told me that I need to see the show. I said, what is it on? She said, it's on Peacock. I said, I ain't got that. She said, it's $3.99. I ain't going to see it. <laughs> I'm not giving Peacock $3.99 a month to see something that's going to be on YouTube next year. I just wait. I'm not giving them $3.99 a month. They can... I'm going to tell you why else they call me cheap. Let me get it off my chest while I'm talking. <laughs> because we get on airplanes all the time. Me and my wife get on an airplane. She has bought internet for a year. I have flown all over the world. I am not paying anybody for internet on no airplane. Anything I got to see gonna be there when I get on the ground. I am not giving nobody $9.99 a month to get on some internet that they are gonna have to reset and tell me we sorry it didn't work. Ain't doing it. I ain't doing it. Did you hear what I said? I'm not doing it. I ain't did it before, ain't gonna do it later. Anything I do, I do it on her phone because I ain't giving them nothing. She said, that's terrible, Pastor. It's going to be what it's going to be. I'm not doing it. I'm aggressive. I'm sorry, baby. Let me back off. I ain't doing it. Nope. Standing my ground, Reverend. Ain't did it then. Ain't going to start now. $9.99. The flight was two hours. Do you know what I could do with $10? I don't know, but it ain't giving it to them. Okay, baby. List all your debts from smallest to largest, regardless of the interest rate. Then pay the minimum amount on all of your debts except for the smallest one. Is this making sense or do you need a, a further explanation? Raise your hand if you're not understanding me. Okay. So then, if you can, and when they say pay extra, I say double because remember what's happening is is that when you send the money to the credit card company, the percentage rate of the interest rate, that money, and it's compound interest. You gotta understand the difference between compound and simple. That money is going towards the interest and anything left over goes towards the principal. But the problem is, is all of the interest is added on the front side. So you gotta pay mostly all interest to eat it all away because the interest has to be paid first and then you start biting into the principal. So what you want to do up front is you want to make sure you're putting more money on it so that it can go towards the principal early because watch this, the interest rate is dependent on the principal. And if the principal is dropping, the interest rate or the percentage rate is dropping because the percentage rate is always owed on what's left. So you have to get what's left lowered because 15% of $1,000 is less than 15% of 10,000. So if you decrease the principal, then the interest is not so effective. So once you do that, then you move to the next debt. But here's where most people mess up. They think that once the bill is paid off, they got free money. Mm -mm. 
Now you're going to take the money that you was paying on that one and add it to the next bill plus its minimum payment. And once that's gone, then you're going to take that large amount. And, and now before you know it, you're going to be paying quadruple what's owed on the bill. And you're going to be paying the high interest rate stuff off faster. And you will be debt free. It's called a snowball effect. And you keep using it. And you have to live like you don't have that money until the debt is out of your life. And might I say this, when you are in debt, you have no money. It is not your money when you owe somebody. So the snowball effect is, and Dave Ramsey uh, indoctrinated this, this is one of the most effective tools that I've ever found to help somebody to get out of debt. The other thing you can do if you're not afraid of creditors and, and you, don't, you don't get flustered real quick and want to cuss everybody out, you can actually call the people you owe and negotiate a lower payout. You can call them and say, look, I ain't had your money last month. I probably ain't going to have it the, the month after. And at the rate me and you going, just talk to him real friend. What's your name, Julie? Julie, at the rate me and you going, I'm going to owe you this money when Jesus come back. Do y'all want anything at all? And, and hospital bills are good for this because some people are in debt because of hospital bills. They are notorious for accepting something. Now, why would they accept less than what's owed? Because the service never cost that much in the first place. The only reason why they're settling for less is because it didn't cost that much. They overcharged us on the front end. So all they want in the end is an exchange to get back what's owed. Does that make sense? So, so now the hospital is saying all we want is the cost of the bed and the needles, the syringes, uh, the, 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 that's all we want. The doctor, his fee is <laughs> out of the question. We just want something. And you can actually negotiate a lower payment if you would just talk to them and stop cussing them out. <laughs> How many of y'all done cussed a few creditors out? How many of y'all gonna have to repent when you get to heaven for what you done said to some of the people who called you about money? When you get in the doors of heaven, you're gonna say, Lord, I know what I said to them people. But remember me when you come into your kingdom. <laughs> Settle for less than you owe. You can negotiate lower interest rates. Um, if you own your own home, this is a good, good tactic. If you have any equity in your home and you don't plan on moving anytime soon, the bank will always give you a lower interest rate for home equity than for loans. This is why it's good to own your house. Let me tell you something. When you own your house, you actually get to spend the same dollar twice. Because when I give the bank $300,000 for the home, as long as the home is worth $300,000, I can go get that money back. So owning your own home is actually having a savings account that has an interest rate tied to it. Because if you live in a neighborhood where the houses are appreciating, then your money is growing. That's why you got to find a way to get a down payment because what some of y'all paying in rent is a mortgage. $2,500 in rent, that's a mortgage, baby. $1,800 in rent, that's a mortgage. $3,500 in rent, that's a good mortgage. Now you got to understand, all of that's relative. Because $3,500 in rent for somebody is intelligent if they don't know where they're going to live, if they're not going to stay in the city long, they're going to go out. It's all relative, but I am telling you that when you own, when you own, the money is yours to spend twice. You can go back and get it. So the home equity line might be 1.5%. And then I've seen people do this. They'll go buy the car with the home equity line because Cadillac wants to charge 7%, but the home equity line is 1.5%. So now you're going to get the car, and even though it's spread out over, you can pay it off whenever you want. You can still pay the payment as if the interest rate is at 6%, but you have a cushion just in case it's tough, and then you can back off for a little bit to the lower payment and start saving back up and then get aggressive again. Is this helping? Okay, so if you own a home and you have equity in the home, if you don't plan on moving and you intend to stay there, you can use a portion of that equity to pay off other debts. And then you can make that one payment 
back to the home equity line and be paying your house off and all of your debt at the same time. Does that make sense? This is for people who, who are a little vain and, and might not want to, but um, there are retail stores that will buy all this stuff you don't need. <laughs> and you can sell some of that stuff you think you're going to get back in for cash. Now, I don't want to get you to get no attitude with me. But some of those expensive clothes are worth money. Some of those expensive shoes and bags you got, that stuff is worth money. You're talking about, it's coming back. Well, you need to make sure that you're rich when it comes back, but right now you need to give it back. <laughs> they buying Louis Vuitton purses. They buying Birkin bags. They buying Gucci bags. They buying Gucci shoes, dresses. They, they got retail shops all over the city. You can go sell that stuff and get money and pay off debt. There is no need to have a $5,000 purse with no money in it. You walking around like this. <laughs> with a puppy in it. Stop this foolishness, people of God. <laughs> Fellas, we walking, we driving Escalades. And ain't got a garage. <laughs> Talking about give me the one with the 26s on it, bro. We got so many bad habits that if we stop, we could be all right. Do you know how much money you got in tattoos on you? <laughs> Time I'm getting this tattoo in honor of my mama. How about starting a scholarship fund in honor of your mama and sending your child to school? Everybody shout priorities. And see, when you talk to people like this, they get mad at you. But see, debt is a difficult discussion. And in order to get out of it, you got to make some difficult decisions, which means you might have to have your edges out for a few days. Yes. <laughs> We might have to see all of them. Your new growth gonna have to look like you got an afro and it's okay because it don't matter. Touch somebody say, I'm fine with new growth just like I am. You might just get your rat tooth comb and get in there and itch it. You just got to survive. You can't get your nails done every time you need to fill in. You're going to have to file them natural nails a couple of seasons. Bro, you're going to have to get you some clippers and learn to shave your own, your beard and your mustache yourself. You have to shave your head. You can't go to the barber shop. I know some of the barbers are going to get mad at me, but you can't go to the barber shop every time. When you're trying to get out of debt, you're going to have to learn how to do some of this stuff yourself. You're going to have to wash your own car. Huh? I know you want to be fancy, but you ain't got made money right now, so you're going to have to let the housekeeper go and clean your own toilet for a change. Lord knows you can't keep on door dashing every day in. Because you're lazy, and now you're paying them double the price so, so they can bring it to you. They got a delivery fee, they got a today fee, they got a tomorrow fee, they got a driving fee, a gas fee, a mud tax fee, a, a, a breathing fee. By the time you get there, you got a cheeseburger for $72. And let me tell you right now, check door dashes stock. You should have bought the stock and not the service because now they are worth $1.6 billion. Hmm? When you're saving money, you got to do stuff. They got an app right now where you can buy groceries for less because, and, and I know this, I, I don't even know if I can do this, but the, the fruit and the vegetables come deformed. <laughs> so your apple might have an arm, but it's... <laughs> oh, Lord, I got to sit down because I'm doing too much. <laughs> Uh, 
I need help. I don't even know why I just saw that. But you can buy food at a discount because we think that all bell peppers are shaped the same. They're not. They, they just put the ones that are shaped the way that our psyche can handle them, put them in the store, and overcharge them. But there's a perfectly good bell pepper somewhere that might have two stems. <laughs> and it might have a lemon coming out the bottom of them. But, but if, if you got to get out of debt, you're just going to have to have lemon-flavored bell peppers for a season. But when you get out of debt, you can go get the good ones. <laughs> oh. See? See, y'all y'all ain't real. Y'all don't want to get out of debt. <laughs> y'all worried about how your bell peppers look and stuff. You gonna be? Alright. Once they cut up, you ain't gonna know. I'm gonna I'm start me a bell pepper cutting service for all the people who don't want to see deformed bell peppers. I'm gonna cut them up and serve and charge you a $2 cutting fee. You won't know no different. You got to sell some of the stuff. You got to make money. Give up some of them Yeezys. You didn't need all of them. Give it up. Sell some of them Gucci belts. Go get your good Target belt for this season. Help me, Holy Ghost. It'll hold you for a year. Here's a good one. Y'all ready for this next one? In this by state, did you know that debt has a statute of limitation? You got to find out what it is for the state that you live in, and those of you watching me online, but there are some debts that expire. And they can still be, but not, they're not going to tell you that you've reached the statute of limitation. They're going to still try to collect. But they can call you and you could have done your homework and be like, I'm sorry to inform you, Julie, that the statute of limitation on this debt has already come and gone. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, but, well, when black people call you and they work at the debt collection agency, it's about to be a whole argument. Eh? Um, who is this the Johnsons? Listen, y'all owe us. And you're going to be like, oh, you ain't going to be calling my house talking to me crazy like that before you know it. Y'all cussing each other out. They hung up on you. Make sure you can't get nobody else. That is a disease. Messes with everybody in the house. What kind of attitude do you have when you can't pay stuff? How do your kids, they get on your nerve different when you're in debt. See, when you got money, you give money, say, get on, go on, go, go on with your friends. When you ain't got no money, tell my mama, can I have $20 to go to the movie? You always ask if that's hot that. See? See the difference? When you got $20, you give money, go on, stay all day. Call me tomorrow if you want to. You ain't got it. You just don't have any sympathy for what I told you about what we're going through. How many of y'all had a problem with saying no? Yet you don't like to tell people no, so when people ask you for something, you know you want to say no in your heart, but you end up doing it anyway. Let me see your hands. Be honest. Yeah, that's all of us. About to give you a great bit of advice. You ready? Be more honest until you can be generous. I ain't got it. Period. I ain't got it. My bills is due, and I'm not about to help you pay yours, and I got to keep praying. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pay my bills and pray for you. Oh, you didn't listen to the story of the ten virgins? The five said, uh, uh, we love Jesus, but we bought enough oil. You didn't, so go get your own oil. It ain't a sin to make people accountable. It's not a sin to be honest and say, I ain't got it right now. It's, it's, it's not a sin to say, I'm not in the season to go above my budget. I'm paying my tithes, my bills, and myself. 
I might be able to help you next week. I can't help you right now. I love you. It's your birthday. I know it's your birthday. Let me give you a present. Happy birthday. I love you. And next year, I might be able to help you out. But right now, I can't. And anybody who makes you feel bad about securing your future doesn't love you anyway. Anybody who makes you go in debt to impress them does not have your best interest at heart, especially if you're honest. Especially if you're honest. What we did in our family, when we were all, you know, trying to make it, uh, we went to a secret Santa format. Instead of buying everybody in the family something, we picked a name. And then said, you can't spend more than $25 on the gift. That was our weight. Now, it's still in effect. Don't, don't blame me. It, we, we stuck with it because I like traditions. But, but, but we started it when we needed to. You don't want anybody to feel bad because they can't buy you something that you want. You don't put anybody in a position to have to go further in debt to make you happy. The Bible says, oh, no man, nothing but to love them. Be more honest until you can be more generous. Tell your children, no. Keep your PlayStation 4 for another year. Or two. Or five. <laughs> you do not need a PlayStation 5 and an Xbox. There is not much of a difference. And I know the gamers saying, there is a big difference. Not if you're broke. If you're broke, it's real similar. And, and, all of the, and all of the going to, the, to all of the different restaurants because all your kids want different stuff, you, you, are you considering the gas and time? So we need to, see, we need to do better. See, y'all, we tell all these kids, look, look, all y'all, look here, look. Look. Now, I'm making sloppy joes. That's what everybody going to eat. And if you don't like sloppy joes, go to bed hungry. But I'm not to be running around all these different restaurants for you to be picking at the food and talking to me crazy at the same time. Oh, y'all ain't no old school parents. Old school parents ain't care nothing about you going hungry. They know you can go three days without eating. Y'all ain't seen naked and afraid. You can go a long time without eating. Now give them water, but they don't got to eat all the time. <laughs> be more honest until you can be more generous. I ain't got it. Your girl say, hey, let's go out of town. Let's go on a cruise. I ain't got you paying. I ain't going. You boring. You don't like to do nothing. No, I'm building. I'm not boring. I'm building. I could spend the $500 to go, but when I come back, I'm going to be at, at ground zero. So I'm, I'm just, you got to say no. Stay at home. And don't be calling me all the time, talking about what I'm missing either. Don't want to hear it. Don't send me no videos. I'm blocking you until you get home. <laughs> Here's the top ways I want you to start saving your money. Number one, how many of y'all have a savings account? What's the interest rate on it? Negative 10. I want you to look up a bank. Um, HBC, what is it? HSBC, I had it in my notes. Um... And I want to say it wrong. It's all, it's all in the um, international traveling. You see it everywhere. HSBC. HSBC Bank. They actually have a bank account that fluctuates. It's a savings account that fluctuates sometimes as high as 5% on the yield. But here's the problem. The problem is, is you can't withdraw it. And that's the kind of bank account some of y'all need that you can't get the money out of. They actually will penalize you if you get the money out. So if you're not ready for it to just sit, then you might want to leave that alone. But that's a high interest rate. That's higher than the CD. Okay, so you want to have a savings account. The other thing is if you have a job and they offer 401ks, you need to opt in. I know the interest rate goes up and down and all that kind of stuff, but let me tell you something. If the, if the market changes, it's going to change wherever you got the money at. Except if it's in your mattress, and if it's in your mattress, then you're not getting nothing on it anyway. 
And I know that some people are saying, well, I'd rather have it all and not lose some. If you want to keep some cash, keep it, because cash is always going to be king. But you can't have an over-influx of it and have nothing in the market working for you. You need passive income, which is money that you're making when you're not working for it. So you need a 401k. Uh, if you don't have, if you work for yourself, that's okay. There is a comparable um, uh, suggestion. There's something called an IRA. An individual retirement account. And let me tell you, my favorite IRA is the Roth. The Roth IRA, ladies and gentlemen, is an individual retirement account for people who don't have 401k or 403 capabilities with the corporation. And here's what you can do. They got it. Listen, one of the best places you can get an IRA from is not a bank. It's from your insurance company. Did you know that your insurance company is actually a bank? How many of y'all bank with State Farm? You can actually get a car loan based on your history of paying your insurance at a lower rate than the bank where your money is. State Farm has a whole bank division. So when you get a Roth IRA, watch this. If you are 50 and below, you can actually max out at $6,000 a year. If you're 50 and above, they raise it to 7,000 that you can put in every year. And let me tell you why it's so good. Because it is a guaranteed, on average, for the last 100 years, 10.8% return. But the reason the government is so smart, because the bond and the exchange on it is so secure, they cap how much you can put in, in it, because if they didn't cap it, people with a whole lot of money would just dump everything in it and it would, the game would be over. So they cap it. 6000 for people under 50, 7000 for people above. Somewhere between 7 and 10% on the return, averaging up to 2021, 10.8% return. But... Once you put it in, you can't take it out because then they're going to penalize you 40% and you're going to lose everything. I'm trying to show you how to set yourself up because I'm telling you right now, when you get 60, your 60-year-old is going to ask your 40-year-old, what did you do for me? You have to trust your 40-year-old self to set your 60-year-old self up. You can't wait until you're 60 to talk about retiring. You got to start now. I mean right now. Everybody say right now. If you are in your 20s and 30s, baby, let me tell you, you can kill the game. You can be rich while you're still working. IRA, individual retirement account. And by the way, you can do this even if you have a job. Ask your insurance if you are with a big insurance company like Allstate or State Farm, ask them about it because they have great interest rates. Why are insurances, insurance companies so rich? It's because they collect money and they do everything they can not to pay it out. So that's a good model for how to be rich. Get a lot, spend a little. Are you listening to me? You can do EFTs, exchange trade funds. You can do stocks. I'm, I'm not going to be, I don't have enough knowledge to start getting into the cryptocurrency NFT stuff because the jury is still out on that, but there's money to be made there. I've made some money in cryptocurrency. I've made some there. The problem with it is sometimes I had trouble getting it out because that exchange and Coinbase and all of that kind of stuff, it's, you got to be savvy and all that kind of stuff. But, but there are ways, there are apps that can help you. There's an app called Robinhood. That, that it's like a mutual fund. It'll invest for you. All you have to do is pick the stock. And you know what, if, you, if you're on Twitter, some of these people are telling you, invest in this. Now, all investments are a risk. But it doesn't have to be the same because some risk are low risk, moderate risk, high risk. When you're young, you want to try to do moderate to high. When, when you're aging, you want to be moderate to low. But there's a risk in it. I have found one investment that has had the highest return I have ever seen in my life, and it is perfectly legal. One time or another, I've gotten a 100% return on this investment. The owner of the company 
has been in business a long time and has never had one false charge filed against him. He's got millions of people in the fund and he pays on time every time. I want to introduce you. First, his name is Jesus and his investment fund is called tithing. And he says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. And then he says that men will give unto your bosom. So if none of that other stuff works, you better bring it to the feet of Jesus. Are you with me so far? So as I conclude this, I want you to know that getting out of debt will relieve at least 50% of your stress. It will eliminate at least 30 to 40% of the arguments that you're having with your spouse. It will alleviate 50 to 60% of your anxiety. If you get out of debt and you relieve the anxiety, you won't have to pay for the prescription. It goes all the way around. If you're not stressed out, you won't be having to take some supplement to balance your hormones. Money answereth all things. That's in the Bible. Money answers all things. If you're sick, you can pay for medicine. Money is used to compress time so we can buy transportation. Money assists us in parenting because we can send our children to the best schools, get them the best education, get them the help that they need. Some of y'all got a business inside of you right now. And the only thing that's standing in between you and that business is not an opportunity. It's your discipline and your wealth. You got a great idea. And it would only take $10,000 to get off the ground if you had $10,000. You are $10,000 away from never having to work another day in your life. $10,000. If you be disciplined, you could do it. You got to not care what nobody think about you. You can't be worried. You can't be vain. It, it can't be about clothes. It can't be about hair. It can't be about cars. It can't be about jewelry. You just got to be focused. And you may have to wear something that's last season. So what? I'm trying to change all of my seasons, and I'm not trying to keep up with what the Joneses is doing, the Jacksons, the Smiths, none of them. I'm just going to be me. I'm going to take some questions. But you got to be serious about this all week. This is Wealth Week. All week, don't make one decision that's going to set you back. No new debt. No, no new debt. No, no, no vacations you can't afford. No, I deserve this girl weekends. No, you don't. <laughs> Fellas. Same goes for you, because we waste money, too, on foolish stuff, cars that we don't need, clothes we don't need, shoes we don't need. This is Wealth Week, and I want you to take your power back and stop being a slave to the lender. Are you with me this week? Come on and put those hands together and bless God. This is what I want to do. I want to, I'll take about five questions, um, and you can come up to the microphone. Um, just, just come real quickly so we can all, because once I get you standing there, then I want to make sure that we don't just keep adding so people don't stay all night. Uh, while you're coming, let me tell you what a question is. Okay. The, 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 a question is something that requires an answer. 
This is not testimony service. Um, I want questions. They told me we got five. We have one that came up. I'll take the ones that we already have. And if there is anybody else in the room that wants to come up, please come up now so that way we can see you because I will not leave you here without completing my job. And I'll just wait about 30 seconds because I know some of y'all may be thinking, just come up to one of these microphones. Y'all give them a hand for the courage. God bless you. Come over here, please. All right, so we got, we got four, five in, and then we'll take those. Okay, how to start a successful business without proper funds. Um, you know, one of the things you may have to do to start a business without the proper funds is you may have to get what they call ghost investors. A ghost investor is somebody that you sell the idea to and they believe in the idea and they fund it. And depending on your relationship with that person, some of those people will do that at an even exchange with no percentage rate added to it. So you have to make sure that you have precisely executed the idea so that it can be explained. What you don't want to try to do is start the business on somebody without all of your eggs in the basket and in a row and your ducks in a row. You want to make sure you know where you're going. You want to make sure you know what you're doing. You need to be able to tell them what are the deliverables, when they will be paid back. So a ghost investor is one of the ways to start a business. Another thing you can do, there are a lot of businesses that don't require a lot of capital to start. And I would say this, if you're trying to start a business and you don't have funds, then you probably need to look at how you're managing your current funds because some people start businesses so they can use the business funds as personal funds. And that's gonna get you in trouble. You cannot pay for stuff out of the business account. The business has to pay you and then you have to pay business. So I, my, my foremost determination on that is try to get a ghost funder, somebody who you, and you're gonna get a lot of no's. You're gonna get a lot of no's because with people who have money, they don't give it away easy. But you gotta be consistent, try to get you a ghost funder, and, and go from there. If not, invest your money in some of these ideas that I'm talking about and wait until it's your turn. Or change your spending habits in your own personal life and save the money through your paycheck. Those are some ways. It's difficult to do anything without money, but there are a lot of ways to get it. All right, you wanna go, let me go in person first and then we'll go to that one. Yes, ma'am. How you doing, Pastor? Yes, ma'am. Um, my question was, I just wanted you to go back into detail about, you said use a portion of the equity from your home to pay other bills, but what was the other part and how do you do it paying your house note and a car note? Okay, so I'm, I'm gonna, uh, t say, say for instance your home is 250000 and when you went in you put 20% down on it I'll just say 10 so you put 25000 on it or 2050 so now you owe 200 okay so you have that, that money that's already there is called equity that's your money and the bank typically will lower you the part that you pay back at a lower interest rate than they loaned you their money because remember, the 250 that they started off with, that was their money. Now you gave them 50, which is your money, and they will loan that back to you sometimes at 1% or 2% lower than your original rate. Now when you take, now don't take the whole 50, just take what you need. You take that amount out and go pay off the other debt that you have that's at a higher interest rate. Let me tell you the beauty of this. Because if your amortization on your home is 15 to 30 years, now the new debt gets spread out over 30 years as opposed to two years. So now this debt that you've been paying at a high interest rate has now been spread out over the term of the home with the ability to pay it off early. Make sure, above all things, that there is nothing in it called a prepayment penalty. Pre some, they want you in debt so bad that they will penalize you for paying it off early. Make sure there's no prepayment penalty. If there is no prepayment penalty, you take that money, 
pay off the other debt. And now when you're paying the note to the home, it's paying all of the debt simultaneously, which you should now have freed up some money to add to the mortgage. Now you're paying off the debt and the house early. Okay? God bless you. Right. Yes, ma'am. To that if we did do the equity does that give me two loans or is it just the one loan that they add to good question so there is something called a jumbo loan most people have two loans anyway and don't know it because if you don't pay if you have a jumbo loan and you don't pay the 20 percent down you've got an 80 and a 20 okay now where this really gets tricky when you don't have the 20 is the PMI, the principal mortgage and interest, which means now you're paying more. This is why having a down payment is so important. And you want to make sure you're above that 20%. Now, it depends because a lot of people in here have loans through banks, but what you don't know is your bank has already sold that loan to somebody else. Okay, some of you will get something in the mail and be like, who is Roderick's credit union? Well, they bought the loan from your current bank. Now, here at the church, give you an example. Here at the church, we have the original loan on this building. But we took out what's called a second. Everybody say a second. We took out a second on the Dream Center. It's all in the same bank. But they are two separate payments because the loans are not married. So when you take out the home equity, depending on the structure of the bank, sometimes it's married and you pay it all off. But if the interest rate is different, then you're talking about two different payments because this loan over here is subject to this payment interest rate. This loan over here is subject to that interest rate payment. So you will be paying the same bank, but two different transactions because there are two different interest rates because it's two different sets of money. But here's the great thing about it. Here's the great thing about it. If you have the opportunity to refinance the original loan, because now it's less, you always want to go and say, can I refinance? If the interest rate is lower, right now I don't recommend it because the interest rates are higher. But if you have cash infusion, you can buy the points. Interest rates are points, you can buy it down. If at all you can interest rate, now you could lower the interest rate on the, on the first and it'll, it'll be closer to the second. So you're paying them in different places because they're two different interest rates, but you're saving money because remember, the money was going to somebody else anyway. You don't take home equity lines because you want to just have money in the bank because you'll be paying interest on money you're doing nothing with. You want to you take the home equity and aim it at something that has a higher interest rate than the home equity line, saving you money, but taking the savings and adding it to the payment, which is accelerating the debt because you're paying more for something that has a lesser interest rate. Does that make sense, guys? So that's how you get out of debt faster. And when you own a home, you have to do that. Now, here's the thing you have to be careful with. If you plan on moving, then you, you shouldn't do that because now you're going to need somebody to pay a higher price for the house in order for you to get out of it. So you want to find out what's my equity, what's the, the, the market rate for my house, find out what you can get for it, and if it's too close, then home equity ain't smart because you don't really have equity. But if you go in there and say, and my house is 250000 and my house is worth three hundred dollars now, now you got $50,000 worth of free money that you can go grab without touching your principal, use their money, pay it off, but you got to accelerate that debt because if you play around and you get the wrong president in office, then the price of the house go right back down and now you're subject to having a house that is worth less than you owe and now you're stuck. I hope that makes sense. Okay, let me go over here. So my question is regarding the HS, I'm just going to call it the HBCU loan. <laughs> That's why I had to look it up because I almost called it that too. For the bank. So to get the optimal benefit, what's necessary because you say you put the money in and you can't touch it. I need to know how long the money needs to stay in to get the best benefit. Yeah, that's good. So when you get in, they'll have different programs and they're going to ask you, what do you want out of it? 
So you got a three-year plan, a five-year plan, a seven-year plan, a 10-year plan, a 20-year plan. So depending on the age and the time you want the money out, you sign up for the market that matches the need you have. It's not a, it's not a blanket strategy. It's a strategy that is specified for what you want. So say, for instance, you put $100,000 in. They're going to say that's 5%. Okay, well, how long do you want to keep it in? Well, I want to keep it in 10 years. They say, oh, well, then we'll give you 7%. They'll raise the interest rate up the longer they keep your money. Why? Because the entire seven years, your money has over here been invested for them. For seven years, they're putting your money in mutual funds, money market accounts, loan it to people, da, 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 da. And then after the seven years, they're going to come back and say, thank you for making me rich. I hope you feel better about this 3000 I gave you on top of that. It's the name of the game. It's the name of the game. But if you don't touch it, it'll be more than what you had in your hand, right? Because it's a higher interest rate. <clears throat> and on top of that, if you touch it, if you withdraw it because you have a need, you can get it. It'll take three to five days to get to your bank account, but your balance will be lower because there is a payment penalty for taking the money out early. And by the way, this is not a loan. This is an investment. It forces you. The first, the first thing that we talked about is discipline. So you, you just got to be in this one for the long haul. Don't touch it. Um, it is what it is, right? You just have to put it in there. And don't put yourself in trouble trying to get in it. Put something in there that you can do without. Because you can always add to it. You just can't take away from it. So start off with 5000 And then you go get 5000 from somewhere else and you add to it. And you just keep adding to it. Over time, it'll begin to matriculate and it'll give you a dividend better than having it uh, in a regular savings account getting 0.02% where you put $100,000 in and at the end of the month you got 12 nickels. And that's exactly what happens, ladies and gentlemen. Okay? It, uh, does that answer the question? Yes, ma'am. Let me go to here real quick. Question for Pastor Keon. Hi, I'm 22 years old and I'm a recent college grad. I just got a job in my field and I'm about to start getting big girl checks. Go ahead, girl. <laughs> I am terrible at savings. Is this your question? <laughs> Read your question. I want to read it how you said it. Just say it. Just say it. <laughs> okay, I'm 22. I just graduated college in December. I just got a job in my field and all that good stuff. So y'all give a hand. Okay. What's your field? Education. I'm a teacher. You're a teacher. She a teacher, y'all. 22 year old teacher. Thank you. Thank you. But but I'm like so bad at saving. Like I I don't have a savings account. Like I don't know how to save. Mm -hmm. You caught me out with the Amazon thing because that's definitely me. But just any advice that you've learned along the way so that by the time I'm at where you're at, I'm, you know, set. <laughs> First of all, a 22-year-old teacher, girl, let me tell you, you bad. You bad. You teach eighth grade, so you the same age as your students? <laughs> they in there trying to holler at you and everything. What's your name? Oh, what's your last name? They were like, Miss Allen. <laughs> so look. As I understand, as a teacher, you got two ways you can get paid. You can either get paid during the school year or you can get paid all year long. Is that correct? I recommend you take the latter. I recommend you take the 12-month option and not the 8-month option because getting paid too much too soon gives you a false sense of security. So I want you to stretch your checks out over the entire school year. There is a thing that, what, what bank are you with, if you don't mind me asking? Do you know that you can go into your bank account right now and automatically set up for a savings to be pulled out of your money every month without, without your efforts. Yeah, so what, what you do is go in the bank, ask them to help you set it up, get a savings account because most savings accounts come free with a checking account. So what you wanna do is you wanna go in there and set up an automatic draft to yourself for 10%. I want you to start paying you like you pay, what cell phone company you with? I want you to, oh, you got good decision-making skills, too. I want you to pay you the same way you pay them. This is what most adults twice your age don't know how to do, pay them. They know how to pay everybody else. They don't know how to pay themselves. You give God 10%. I make this promise to you right now in the name of Jesus. If you live by what I call the 70-10-10-10 rule, you will set yourself up for the rest of your life. Live on 70%. Tithe 10%, save 10%, and invest 10%. By the time you're my age, you're going to be balling. Okay? 
So make sure that your checking account is connected to your savings account. It will automatically draw out your set amount every week or every two weeks when you get paid without you doing anything. And, and, and the second thing that I would do, if you're not disciplined to do that, put your savings account at a branch of a bank that is not national, that, has, that doesn't have a lot of branches and has very, very limited uh, hours and internet access, make it hard for you to get it. I used to have my savings account at a bank that only had one office, and it closed at 4 o'clock. Yeah, okay. It's called Prosperity Bank. Go to Prosperity Bank. It's on, it's on Postal right over there by McDonald's. <laughs> Go over there, put your money in that bank. It closed at 4 o'clock. They won't even let you touch it. Yeah, go do that. All right. Okay. Yes, ma'am. I'm a single landlady. One of my properties needs a kitchen and a bathroom remodel. I've budgeted a very small amount, but seriously thinking of a signature loan for the rest. I can then justify raising rent. Your thoughts? I'm nervous. That's a good question. Um, if you're watching online, depending on what the loan payment will be and the increase in rent will make this make sense. Because if the loan payment is 500 and rent only goes up 200, you just got a, a loan to be in debt. So you want to make sure that you can raise the rent to at least 25 to 40% higher than what the loan payment is. So that way you will always have enough to pay the loan and put up money so that when you buy the next property, you don't have to take a loan out to get it fixed. What you want to do is you want to allow the surplus from this property to pay for the flips for all of your future properties. So make sure that your payment and your rent rate are not close, otherwise you will have made no progress. Make sure that by improving the bathroom and the kitchen will raise the rent enough where you can pay the extra loan and put money aside because if you do the bathroom and the kitchen, it ain't going to be long before you have to do everything else. Uh, so that, that's my answer on that. Does that help? All right. Yes, ma'am. I have, uh, it's like too many questions. So okay. the first one is when you're, you bought your daughter the phone and you paid it off when the bill came in, did they charge you any extra fees for they, paying the bill? They didn't because okay. it's, it's, when you read the fine print, you can't do it in 30 days. So, so you can't pay it off immediately, but you can pay it off eventually. Okay. And because she had another phone, she, they tried to get me, but I got them. Because what I did is I filed an insurance claim on the phone. And got a brand new phone. And then took it back to them and gave them a brand new phone to credit the new one. You see? Because the new phone got more value than the phone that I'm bringing in there. So I filed the insurance, paid that little $50, got a brand new 13 in and say, I don't want it. I want another color. Now, I ordered on insurance, I ordered one with 250 gigs because that's what my insurance covered. But I bought one with 125. Price went down. You see? See? And then it's somebody, well, she's going to take a lot of pictures. They're going to have to all fit on 125. Mm -hmm. What do you think about leasing a vehicle versus buying it? Uh, I know, I know. No, I love that question. Because most people think it's bad to lease. It ain't, mama. Do you know, do you have a business? Mary Kay. Hmm. No, 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 don't, right. don't minimize that. I know, I know. Okay. What's your name? I'm a nurse. What's I'm your Marianne. name? Okay. Octavia. Octa I want you to start Octavia Enterprises, LLC. And what she does is she gives medical advice to people. And then I want you to lease the car in Octavia Enterprise. Because Octavia Enterprise has to give the CEO transportation. Now, the reason why we lease cars is because we can get more car for less money. So when you lease a car, you're buying a percentage of the car, and it's sometimes it's smart because you don't have any, all of the upkeep is up to them. You're gonna drive in a certain amount of miles. Now make sure you don't go over the miles because once you go over, you know you gotta pay all that back. But you can actually write off the cost of the vehicle because it's a fringe benefit for the CEO of Octavia Enterprises. 
put an office in your house and write off some of your rent and your electricity and your phone bill. Because your house is your office. Don't you work there? So half of the electricity is used to run your business, right? And when you're drinking water at work, that's different than drinking water when you're at home. And that internet, this different, work internet is different than home internet. See? Not a DBA, a limited liability corporation. Okay, now what you got to do is start the LLC and make the DBA do business in the name of the LLC. Now, this is why you need an LLC. Because if I decide to sue you now with a DBA, I can get your personal funds. But an LLC puts a firewall out that keeps me from being able to sue you personally. I can sue the business, but you can file for bankruptcy. I can't touch you. So uh, the reason why, and if LLC is $500, and people are out here doing stuff at DBA with $16 businesses because they don't have the discipline. You, st you start an LLC so that if the company has a mishap, people can't bankrupt you. They can bankrupt the business. But the problem with that strategy is once they bankrupt Octavia Enterprises, then you go back and start October Enterprises. <laughs> So, so you can, the tax law is made for people who have money. That's why they make the tax law, for people who have money. When you look at people who have money, they are paying the least amount of taxes because they're the ones making the tax law. So now you got to start orchestrating your life according to how they live. Your gas is a write-off. You a business owner. You have no business paying that high of a tax rate. And you want to make sure that the business pays you. Because there is something, this is too much, okay. There is something called constructive receipt. That when the business receives the income, you don't have to be taxed if you don't constructively receive it. It could stay in the company's register. You have to pay the franchise tax, but you don't have to pay the income tax because it didn't income. And if you set it up as an S corporation, now the X corporation says, S corporation, S is in Sam, the S corp says, now I am differentiating myself between the business and myself so you can tax the business, but you can't tax me. Or you can tax me, but you can't tax the business. If you do it as a C corp, you might be taxed on both ends. Now, the next level is to get your holding company to watch over all of them. So now you got the shell company that pays the LLC, that pays the person, and you are skipping through tax liability all the way down to yourself. And by the way, when you tithe, it's called a write-off. The church sends you a charitable contribution sheet, and you also put that on your taxes. People don't know that not only does tithing help them in heaven, it helps them on earth. They looking for some, to claim somebody kids for dependence. They can do the same thing through tithing. Take that tax sheet, give it to your tax man. He said, oh, you gave $100,000 to church? Oh, we're going to put that in there because you lost that income. That's why you see a lot of rich people giving to charity, not because they love people, because they hate taxes. All right, that's good, that's good. All right. How do you get out of tax debt? <laughs> All right, I knew that was, I knew that was it. All right, how do you get out of a tax debt your ex-spouse caused? The court said, I don't owe it, but the IRS won't take it off me. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I have a little expertise in this area. <laughs> um, first of all, for people who make significant income, just to give you advice now, it's probably best that you file joint but separate. 
Because when you file joint but separate, separate, it keeps this kind of issue from being an issue. Not saying that your money ain't together, but fouling separately. Because it is only at that moment, and I know that whoever asked the question, I know you didn't do this, because the IRS doesn't even know that you're connected to that person until y'all file together. Okay? So the first thing you have to learn about correcting a mistake is not to make another one. Number two, call the IRS. You, it's three people you can't mess with. It's the I, the Aura, and the S. They gonna find you. Did y'all hear Joe Biden make this announcement and said, to those of y'all who stole PPP money, did y'all hear him? He said, he was acting like he was talking to Osama bin Laden. He said, we will find you and we will hunt you down and there's nowhere you can hide. <laughs> did y'all hear him? He said it. Ten years in prison. So I suggest you call them people. The second thing you can do is if you're sure you have no culpability and no liability, the IRS's job is to collect resources. Now, there are all kinds of theories of, as to whether or not that's a legal entity. I'm not even getting into that. But you probably need to assess how much you owe. Because I'm quite sure if you think that you are not liable, hiring a good tax attorney to talk to the IRS Depending on how much you owe, the lawyer fees might be lower than what's owed, depending on what you owe. So you might want to hire a lawyer who knows the language and stop talking to them yourself because they are way above you and I in that game. And all they want to do is get paid. So I would hire a tax attorney to find out if I have any culpability. If you have no culpability then they're going to have to forgive the debt. If you do, and I wish I was able to ask you, how, how are you connected in that? Because if it's an IRS debt that has something to do with, say, for instance, a house that y'all co-signed on, you hooked. But if it's a car that they bought in their name and you wasn't on the loan, you might have no culpability and you might be able to get out of it. So I can't answer it fully because I don't know what the issue is, but I will hire a tax attorney especially if the lawyer fees are going to be lower than the, uh, the taxation that's owed. All right, so those are the questions that have been asked. Is, is there any more up here? Is that it? That's it, Rick? All right, let's give, let's give God some praise in this place. Did that help you guys? Let's, let's, um, let's prepare our hearts to give, and we're going to go home. Um, I, I, I told you all on Sunday that I want you to start giving your seed an assignment. This is Wealth Week. All week long, be focused on your money. Please. Go on your credit card. Find out how many recurring payments do I have for services I'm not using? How many apps have I not canceled that are still charging me? You'd be surprised how much money you can save. Let me give you another way to save money. Do you know how much money you are wasting by paying your bills late? Them late fees is a beast. Stop waiting to the last minute talking about, oh, it's due Friday, I'm going to send it Thursday. Because by the time they get it, it's going to be next week. Put some alerts on your phone to let you know this bill is due on this day. Put it on. I, I, I know because I, know I hate doing this. But sometimes if you're not disciplined, you might have to put your payments on automatic. I, I, I know we hate doing that because companies, they take the money in five minutes, but they take 10 years to give it back. So I understand that, I understand that fear, but if you're not disciplined, you're losing a fortune just by paying late. 
But after I give you all of these practical things and you still don't give unto the Lord, it will not change for you. You can follow everything that I said, but if you don't tithe, the moth will eat it away. I am a tither. My mother taught us to tithe. She used to give us plastic bags and she would make us put our 10% in that plastic bag. We've been tithing since we were kids. I'm blessed because I've been following this all of my life. I come from blessings. My grandfather made $250 a month, paid his house off, and died with six figures in the bank. You, you help me understand how a man could make 20, what, what's that? $2,500, $3,000 in a year. Yes, the money was different, but how, how, how did he pay his house off? And how did he have six figures in the bank? Because he was a steward. My grandfather had the same TV when I was grown that he had when I was a kid. Y'all know that Curtis Mathis, that thing? He had it so long it became furniture. I, I thought it was a table. They put a cloth rag over it and everything and put uh, fake fruit. Y'all, you know you got a grandmama house where you got fake fruit in there. Anybody remember them plastic grapes and bananas and oranges and pears? My grandfather's toilet roll holder in his bathroom was so old it had a radio in it. And it was pink. Y'all don't remember that. Oh, you little young Thundercats don't know nothing. He had a radio. Grandfather kept the same furniture so long he had plastic on it. Plastic started cracking. It'll cut you if you try to sleep on it. I've been bruised many a times taking naps over his house. My grandfather had two cars in my lifetime. A 1979 Canary Cadillac, white interior. He washed it himself every day. Didn't get another one. I believe it was a, what was that mama, 2008, the other Cadillac? Think about that. And he didn't go in nobody's hall of fame. He didn't buy the world, but he loved his family and he left an inheritance for his children. And that, my brothers and sisters, was a blessed man. If you were to die today, would you leave something behind? Or will we have to raise something to put you away? I don't want you robbing Peter to pay Paul, Pauline, or none of them. I want you to have life and have it more abundantly. If you believe that this is the season for you to live in overflow. I just want you to stand on your feet. When you get your gift in your hand, because the Bible says he loves a cheerful giver, I, I want to make sure that the spirit of this house is in congruence with the word of God. I want you to get that money in your hand, that gift in your hand, that cell phone. If you're watching online, I'm talking to you too. I want you to get that gift ready and I want you to begin to speak in your heavenly language. Come on and open up your mouth right now. Open up your mouth. Open up your mouth. Open up your mouth. God, I need a miracle in my house. I need a miracle in my money. I'm ready for the next level. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Come on. Come on. Open up your mouth. I can't hear you, Lighthouse. Come on and open up your mouth in this place today. Yeah. Oh Lord. oh Lord, bless me indeed, enlarge. Oh Lord, bless me. Somebody say, I pray. One more time. Increase, oh Lord, enlarge, oh, bless me, 
Stay right there. Come on, everybody is saying, I pray for increase. Increase on my job. Increase in my marriage. Increase in my ideas. Increase in my business. Somebody say, increase, increase. Stay right there. Say, increase. For me, God, I need you today. Tomorrow won't be the same. Lift that gift up. God's about to open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that you won't have room enough to receive. He's about to enlarge your territory. Blessings coming from the north, the south, the east, and the west. Everybody say, oh Lord. Me a favor inform your neighbor because they don't know this about you just inform your neighbor because i see some people ready to go but i see people crying real tears because you don't know how heavy this been for some people do me a favor just tell your neighbor i have no idea what i was doing but i do know what i am about to do and that is break free now i don't know who that's for i don't know who that's for i don't know who that's for I don't know who that's for. I don't know who that's for. Give them another declaration. Tell somebody, I don't know what last season was, but I do know what the next season will be. Next season is the season of increase. If you believe it, shout in this place. I need to hear the sound of increase. Somebody shout increase. All of the people who have the Bible in their hand, in their heart, in their phone, and believe the word of God online and in this place, I want you to shout and make hell nervous that this is the last season that you will have dominion over my money. I'm coming out of this thing. Somebody's about to get the breakthrough. I feel the angel troubling the water. I feel God about to do something new. Behold, I do a new thing. Somebody shout, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. 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 Somebody shout, I'm blessed. Somebody say, not only am I blessed, but I'm walking into the season where I am a blessing. Where are the blessings in the room? I feel the devil get nervous. I feel the devil get nervous. There's a blessing coming for my children and my children's children in a thousand generations. I shall never lack again. My broke days are behind me. I am a blessing carrier. Days are over. My broke days are over. My broke days are over. Give 
Cancel debt once and for all. And I'm telling you what I know. I'm not guessing about this. I promise you it's the truth. And I don't get nothing out of this other than but seeing you prosper. I promise you it's the truth. Numbers 23 and 19 God is not a man that he should lie Nor the son of man that he should repent He don't make mistakes His word will never fail Even when our imaginations can't keep up He's always true. Your children deserve to be free. You don't want your daughter meeting the man of her dreams and they spend their first six months arguing about her credit score. That I must see. You don't want your boy walking around thinking 
that because his pants cost a thousand dollars, he a man? This is the devil's work to keep us in bondage. But we're coming out of this thing. Coming out. We. Everybody say we. We coming out. You so anointed. You are so anointed. You know what? I want to do something before we go. I'm going to pray for your wife. Um, the reason why I'm praying for you is I, he hears God. And in Psalms 150, after we finish praising with our breath, he, the Bible says they can praise him on the instruments, and he, he does that. But to be the helpmate of a gift is a calling. And I want to speak uncommon, next dimensional favor over your life. Your, your t-shirt is a prophecy. Superhero power. That God will keep you encouraged and in perfect peace. Because his mind has to be stayed on thee. And whenever the enemy tries to distract you. For the attention that he has to give to God. I want you to always be comfortable in knowing that when he finishes with God, he's coming right back to you. He's about, you think he has already. He's about to go all over the world. All over the world. Let me show you. What, what's the song that your father did for Michael Jackson? Which one was it? Remember the time. His father, huge producer. He did remember the time for Michael Jackson. I can go through the catalog of all the things that, he, that he's done. There is something about your approach to an instrument that changes the atmosphere. And everybody can play the song that you're playing, but everybody wouldn't know to play the song that you're playing because it's not about ability, it's about availability. Your availability. And as you begin to play that song, somehow it was in my spirit when you hit the key. And had I not stopped you, everybody was about to start singing it. What am I saying? What he's doing right now is going through what, what's called, and Sharon, you can correct me on this, it's chord progression. It's the mixture of keys, which we call in concert harmony. And when all of those keys work together, we enjoy the sound of what comes from the instrument. See, I want you to know that you are a key and that I am praying for instrument for instrument harmony that we are all hitting the debt free key the prosperity key so when this praise goes up to God it sounds like harmony I pray and this is for every one of you in here Above all, that you would prosper and be in good health. If you receive it, lift your hands. I am free. No longer bound. 
no more. My soul. Finish it right there. Everybody say, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Take your gift. God, right now we're canceling debt. We're believing for answer prayers. We're praying for health over our life, wealth in our experience, protection for our children, whether they are with us or somewhere else. That every home they lay in, every school they attend, every car they get in will be protected by the blood of the Lamb. We pray for our parents that you will satisfy them with long life. We pray for our grandparents if they're still here that they may continue to give us wisdom. We pray for this church that we will continue to increase not just in our praise and worship but what we do for our communities. How we feed the hungry, clothe the naked, how we satisfy the needs. And we can do all of that when there is meat in the house. Bless us to be a blessing. And when we release it, God, you said it in your word, and we go along with the promise that we will never lack being obedient to you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. If you believe it, shout amen. Pass your gift to my right, your left. My soul is resting. We're going home. Don't leave yet. Hey, hey, hey. more time and I'm going to give you a bit of addiction. I am free. The death chain is broken. Somebody shout it. It's just a blessing. Dismiss us from this place, but never from your presence. Devil, we hate to tell you, but you lost again. When we get home, God, let us find everything in order. Not only just in the house, but in our hearts. And in the hearts of the people who will be there when we return. Do a new thing. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody say amen. Tell somebody on your way, I love you. Ain't nothing you can do about it. God bless you. What an amazing time we had in the service today. The word was phenomenal. Listen, if you haven't had an opportunity to join our church, the information is on the screen. We want to connect with you. Or maybe you're saying, hey, I just want to sow a seed into what they're doing right there at the Lighthouse Church. Well, listen, the information is also down on the screen. We want to help you connect to a greater mission. Listen, I want to pray with you because the word today, I know has settled in someone's spirit. It's changing your life. So come on, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we just want to say thank you just for everything that was said today. God, we thank you, Lord, for all the ears and the hearts that received this word because we know that you're challenging them and transferring them and pushing them into a new dimension in you. God, we just want to ask God that you lift them up Whatever the issue is in life, we pray, God, that you deal with it and work it out right now. God, we just want to say thank you. All these blessings we ask in your son Jesus' name, amen. Listen, we can't wait to connect with you. Remember, share this message. Share this on, on every platform you have. Someone needs to hear this word. We love you. Can't wait to see you again. Bye-bye. Hello, everybody. My name is Pastor Keon Henderson. And it took me 27 years to get to the place where I can explain this message. You see, up until now, I've done a pretty decent job at saying to you what God has said to me through the Word of God. But I felt in some ways unfulfilled that I was helping people to gain spiritual maturity, but I didn't see many physical footprints in the earth 
that will remind somebody once I'm no longer here that God has given me a ministry not just for the church but for the marketplace. And out of that birth, what I am calling Take Action. And up until now, we've only known it as a teaching series, but it is actually much more. Let me explain. I founded this 501c3 nonprofit organization that's committed to protecting, strengthening, and uplifting the underserved, the disenfranchised, and I want to be effective, not later, but now. I am hearing what your heart is saying and I kind of know what it takes to change a community, both in the private sector and in the church. Nimble enough in our response, providing educational tools for finances, for mentoring, home ownership, entrepreneurialism. I want to help build leaders and investors in an ecosystem that will transform lives, people who are committed to breaking down barriers and inspecting and inspiring people to take action now. I wanna to help to convert some of our global ideas so that we can become partners in changing our communities wherever you live. Our work is specifically focused on expanding the power of influence to the disenfranchised, strengthening the underserved. Listen, I found the vision of the Lighthouse Church Take Action, and I found it as a way of being committed to the greater inclusion, turning away nobody, no one, and expanding opportunities for every person in a great atmosphere of acceptance, listen, authenticity, and moreover, through the spirit of love and anticipation. I believe that if we partner together, we can change the world. And we're gonna start right where we're starting. We're gonna start here in Houston, Texas, and the surrounding areas where our campuses are in Katy, in the Sugarland area, Southwest A Leaf, Texas, downtown, Pearland, everywhere we are, and for all of our Lighthouse 2.0 members around the world, we hear you too. We're starting in Anguilla, rebuilding a park that will help people and young people there to scale and to find their way and to find their fit. And we will not stop there. This is just the beginning. So I'm asking you to join me on a journey that starts today but we'll finish when the Lord returns. I love you. May God bless you. Let's take action now.